basically every game for almost the entire year. It's like a, a, a rerun, and they know what I'm going to say. They know what they're going to say almost every single game, and uh, I'm sure they have it memorized by now. Well, Trey Poozer looks sharp. What are you seeing from your right-hander? Uh, he's doing a good job. He's getting swings. He's getting swings and misses on multiple pitches, and he's getting our defense involved. That's us at our best. I mean, he's just ramming it in there, going on the attack, and let our defenders work. Coach, as far as the offensive side, what have you liked or what do you want to see more? That's Brady Casper, a ground out in the second. Trey Poozer delivers, and that's low and outside for a ball. 1-0 on the Beavers' right fielder. But this ballpark is jammed. On the ground to first. Flagged down by Ryan Nicholson. Leads Trey Poozer. These guys work together. They communicate. They push. I mean, I know we haven't put any runs on the board uh, to this point, but they're coming back in. They're building a plan. They're working on making adjustments uh, against a guy who has a, a good mix. But um, I loved where they're at, how they, how they dominated last weekend together and uh, looking to carry it on this weekend. Coach, let me talk to you specifically about that offensive plan game against a Trey Poozer. Well, I mean, you still got to prep for everyone that they have on roster. Um, <clears throat> so trying to put together a plan for all of that in advance. Uh, and then, you know, a guy who has some heavy sink, change up that he's going to throw all the time, breaking ball as well. Uh, you really just got to be able to see it up, make sure you're not trying to do too much with it. Try to get big on something with some heavy sink, and you're going to miss it, you're going to clip it, pop it up, or roll one over. So, um, so you know. Well, uh, right out the right out the shoot, he was uh, filling up the zone, landing the slider too. He's getting out here and play catch. There we go. Okay. Just what you wanted, right? Got out, you got the lead runner at second base. Yeah, that works. I'll take it. <laughs> yes, uh, eight, but really, uh, you know, Aiden works with uh, quick tempo. You know, he starts to, I mean, he really gets in rhythm out there. Um, I like that Tanner came out and had a visit with him, you know, after a little bit of traffic. And then he dialed it right back in. Uh, so it just shows that there's some good leadership. Coach, can you tell us one thing about Travis Bazana that the world may not know? I know we know everything about him, supposedly, but what is something that's been really special to you? Um, <laughs> I, he's just an incredible human being with a huge heart. And I can't uh, express that enough. Um, I, I love the young man. He's going to do great things in sport, but also when he makes himself better, he makes us as coaches better um, in, in all aspects. So, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I should share any crazy stories. I really don't have a ton, but, um, you know, he, he is. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Thank Mitch. you, guys. Mitch Cannon, the head coach of Oregon State. One out, Mitchell Daly at first after the fielder's choice where Jabin Trotsky was able to throw it the second to force Nick Lopez. Ryan Nicholson, and it gets away from the catcher, Tanner Smith, and a free 90 feet. So essentially the sacrifice bunt that Oregon State took away, they give him the 90 feet. Yeah, and they took advantage of it, right? And Three and one the count on Nicholson who doubled off the wall in center in the second driving in the only run. Three and one. Aiden May, the pitch. Chopped up the first base side foul. And the count is run full on Ryan Nicholson now. And back to second goes Mitchell Daly. And Homer twice drove in four. He's homered in each of the last two games and narrowly in the second inning missed for making it three in a row. Ground ball towards short. Elijah Hainline goes to third to get the lead runner, and they throw out Daly at third base. Nicholson's aboard on the fielder's choice with two away, but the base running mistake, look, that's the way Kentucky plays, but sometimes they can be over aggressive. Yeah, they're, they're going to take their chances, right? And you can't try to force the issue right there, because now you would have had a guy in scoring position with two outs and still another opportunity for a base hit to score you. Nicholson three steals on the year at first as two outs and Nolan McCarthy will fly out in the second. The pitch and May buries a fastball in the everything else is artificial. 2-0 to McCarthy is low and away from May. 96 on the fastball and it's 3-0 and, oh, and Oregon State is a similar field in Corvallis with the exception the mound in Corvallis is the field turf. There is no dirt on the Oregon State field at Goss Stadium at Coleman Field. 3-0 and a chop to third. Javid Trotsky on the high bounce, throws it across, and got him by a half a step to retire the side. Runner stranded, we're through four in Lexington. Bottom of the order. And a cold strike to Mason Guerra leading off the top of the fifth inning for Oregon State. Bottom of the order. Oregon State with three championships 
all in the last 20 seasons. And Guerrero hit by a pitch up and in that got away from Poozer. And a leadoff base runner for Oregon State to start the fifth. Mason Guerrero, he's aboard. That'll bring up Javen Trotsky. So when they check on Guerrero, appears to be okay at first base. Next up, and the Yankees. 5.30 Eastern. Baseball tonight, Sunday night countdown. That's tomorrow's Sunday night baseball. I'm not going to try to do a British accent. That's it like Tim Kirchin and Doug Glanville because they're over there. <laughs> Along with Michael Kay, Javen Trotsky bunts up the first base side that peels off foul. This one thing with bunting on this turf here, we've seen a couple of high bounces. You do have to be careful as far as how you deaden the baseball. Can't get too far on top of the baseball or bounce straight back to the catcher, then he'll have an opportunity to throw down a second. So you do have to be really there. One ball, one strike. Four sacrifice bunts for Trotsky this year, tying for the Oregon State lead. And it's 2-1. Crowd didn't like it, but it was high. The order looming after. You'll see Daly over that third base creeping in, expecting the bunt towards his side here. There's a strike to Trotsky. Pulled the bat back. The two strikes, you leave it on. Well, the thing with Trotsky is he's really good at handling the... Mason Guerra hit by a pitch at first. Poozer, the 2-2. Trotsky and a half-swing comebacker. Poozer to second, throws it away. And a break for Oregon State. It appeared Poozer tried to hurry at X because they had the potential for a double play. Absolutely. He actually had a little more time than he originally expected. And he was a little off balance on the throw. Uh, doesn't get to third on that because he slid into second base. Otherwise, he might have rounded and able to get to third base on the air and throw. Mount visit for Kentucky pitching coach. Dan Roselle out to the hill. And... Oregon State with two on and nobody out, and Tanner Smith coming up. The nine hitter with Bazzana on deck, it brings up an interesting dilemma. Because if you bunt here to advance the runners, one. Corners playing up a bit. And Smith pulls the bat back, and it's a strike. And also, Tanner Smith, you wonder. Now, he's only grounded into one double play, but there's a catcher and a right handed hitter. That's what Kentucky is probably thinking about. And he almost fired into the backstop, one and one the count. Another thing with Smith this year, too, hasn't been great with runners in scoring position, so the bunt may offer an opportunity to move those runners over. He's only four for 35 with runners in scoring position, batting 114. One and one the count of the Beavers' catcher. Trey Poozer, the pitch, and it's low and away to Tanner Smith, two and one. Kentucky clinging to the one. Pops it up, and it goes to the screen, and now it's two and two, and I'll ask you again, Xavier. <laughs> do you leave the bun on here with two strikes? Different situation. It now. is a different situation, and Smith is a guy that, just like Trotsky, can be able to handle the bat with two strikes. Knowing Mitch, he's done a good job of letting his guys hit with two strikes. I'm expecting him to swing the bat. And he does, and he grounds it foul right past third base coach for Oregon State, Ryan Gibson. Great history with Oregon State baseball. And as a hitter here, my main thing is just staying out of the double play, right? If I can drive, try to get something out front, drive it to the outfield, staying away from two, two ball. Swing and a miss, he got him. The breaking ball, five strikeouts for Poozer and a big first out. Bazzana 0 for 2. And a nice job behind the plate by Devin Burks to smother that. But you have right-hander Robert Hogan getting loose. And a lefty, rather two righties, I should say, are up. And Cameron O'Brien has joined him. 2-0 and on Bazzana. Round out and a strikeout tonight. This is where Bazzana is so good. If he gets his swing off here, he can expect some damage. Catches the outside edge. Two and one on Bazzana. As Kentucky with the overshift onto the infield. The shortstop, Grant Smith, swung around on the right. Here comes the 2-1. And it's low to Bazzana. 
And it's a tough spot for Pooser X because when you're looking at the Oregon State lineup, this is the one guy that you circle that we can't let him beat us. Absolutely. And they don't. Ball four, they're loaded for Micah McDowell with one. And I would expect a similar game plan against McDowell. Another left-handed hitter here now with bases loaded. And an opportunity less than two outs. We saw a lot of off-speed there going to that slider, going to that change. Bases full, one out. And a squeeze play put on, and scampering back to third was Mason Guerra as Oregon State trying to catch Kentucky off guard. Yeah, we have the safety squeeze here, which is where the runner on third has to see it down from McDowell. If he doesn't see it down, he does not commit to going full speed home. Did a nice job getting him. And McDowell didn't look comfortable trying to bump that one on the that, first pitch. That's the only thing I don't like about that is now you get yourself into a hole extremely quick. Mason Guerra at third, Javen Trotsky at second, Travis Pizana at first, the 0-2. McDowell swinging a man, struck him out. And on three pitches, Poozer gets his sixth strikeout. Two and zero oh on Gavin Turley, a walk and a flyout. Oregon State has seven slams this season, five by Turley. Micah McDowell, who just struck out, has one. And Jacob Craig, not in the lineup tonight for Mitch Cannon, has the other. Yeah. Gavin Turley was aiming for his sixth slam of the year. Yeah, that one's too big of a swing right there. You saw the helmet almost fall off. To be able to drive something and use the whole field here. I don't have to think left center. Yeah. Evens the count. Low outside edge at 94. That's the fastest pitch we've seen from Poozer tonight. Obviously a little amped up here. Now he can use an opportunity to maybe expand the zone with that slider after using that fastball in the corner. Everybody's standing here at Lexington. Ground ball to third, up with it. Mitchell Daly flips it to second, and Oregon State leaves him loaded. After sweeping through the Lexington Regional last weekend against Western Michigan, Illinois, and Indiana State, they are 23-6 and six here at home this year. And if there's been Achilles heel for Oregon State, they're just 9 and 10 on the road. So Grant Smith, the nine hitter, has eight sack. And these Albuquerqueans, is that what we're going to call them? They've known each other for a long time. And Smith on a pitch up and in. And he's saying it hit him. And appeal no swing. And Smith. Heading down toward first, it may have caught him in the helmet. And Smith came up and in with the fastball. And there is Grant Smith getting checked out by the athletic trainer for Kentucky. Take single and a hit batter. May the pitch and floats that way outside. Good backhand by the catcher, Tanner Smith. And this own from ESPN who says he might slot between that 12 to 18 range in the first round at this point. This is the guy you want up. And the pitching coach for Oregon State, Rich Dorman, headed out to the mound to calm down May. Activity beginning in the Oregon State bullpen. Looks like the right-hander, Joey Munt, beginning to throw. But a threat for Kentucky already leading 1-0 here in the last of the fifth. And this mound visit is more about just, hey, hitting our spots and sticking with the game plan that we brought in before this game even started. May has thrown just 57 pitches. And he has been efficient so far tonight. 1-0 the count on Ryan Waldschmidt. Again, in the, what would be dirt for May, it's 2-0. and In front of him get hit, now a couple of balls. I can't get overly aggressive here. He's got to bring me my pitch. Second team all SEC, Waldschmidt. Way outside. And May has not been close. These have been non-competitive pitches from Aiden May. Okay. And another one that's not close. They're loaded. The first walk issued by May. James McCoy, the leadoff single, he's a third. 
Grant Smith scoots up to second base, and here comes Emilian Petrie, who's 0 for 2. Oregon State plays the infield at double play depth, and May fires a fastball outside. Rather, a changeup for May, and it's 1 0. Petrie homered in the regional final last Sunday against Indiana State. Out toward right center field, that's a hit. One run is in. Here comes Grant Smith around third. Petrie dives into second base in a two-run double. Three, nothing Kentucky. Out, second and third for Devin Burks, who has struck out twice. Corners playing even with the bag. Middle of the diamond is back for the Beavers. And the safety is scoop for five with runners in scoring position tonight. Ryan Walsh made a third. Emilian Petrie at second, and that runs inside a slider from May. And if they go back to the safety squeeze here again on a 1-1 count, it's on Waldschmidt over there. At... Jam shot pop up, Travis Pisana backpedaling at second, and a big first out for Aiden May. One out, second and third. All right, here's an interesting spot also, Xavier, because second and third, you have an open base at first, one out. Nick Lopez is two for two tonight. Would you pitch around him? I, I can't afford to pitch around him for the moment because I've got to get back to throwing strikes and being competitive in the zone, letting the defense work. Right now, I feel like Aiden May is, is still trying to get back to what he was doing earlier in the game. I don't want to let any extra base, any guys on base. Fastball missing for ball one. Grad transfer from USC. And May just misses off the outside. Southern California native, Nick Lopez. And May steps off. His disengagement right there. Take a deep breath, it's 2-0 on Lopez. Runners lead the pitch, and that's in there for a strike. If I'm Lopez, I'm okay with that, right? I want to find out where he's locating at. That way, my focus can be up the middle. You see how second base and shortstop are back. Corners are even with the bag. I got to think middle of the field here, even with the ground ball. Fouled off by Lopez. I don't have to necessarily think deep fly ball for the sacrifice fly. A ground ball to second base or shortstop will still score us another run. Two and two on Nick Lopez. Ryan Walsh made a third. Emilian Petrie at second, the two-run double. Backdoor slider, strike three call to Lopez. The 1-0. Swing and a miss. Good fastball up from May. And Daly's done a lot of his damage with two outs in an inning this season. 23 of his 43 runs batted in have come with two outs. Two in scoring position. Got him to chase a slider. And two strikes on Mitchell Daly. Transfer from Texas. Aiden May. The pitch. Fouled off of the plate. Here it comes. In the air, slicing toward the right field corner. It pushes foul. Goes over on the grassy berm down the right field side, late on the 94 fastball. We talked about Mitchell Daly's time in Texas. He's, he's had the opportunity to go to Omaha. About a guy that's had the type of experience that he's had. That invaluable to bring that to this team. Now he's looking for a two-strike base knock to bring in another run. In the air, right field. Brady Casper drifting with it. And he puts it away to retire the side, but Kentucky gets two. 